Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my second class and my dear students, my second class consists of the topic soil. So today I will be dealing with all the major topics and subtopics that comes under your chapter which has been mentioned in your syllabus. Okay? So we all have been coming across the word called soil, right? So soil is one of the major or essential elements for our living and the sustenance of earth in its natural environment. So the four major elements are light, air, water and soil. Okay? So soil is regarded as the base or floor for plant growth and those plants are those we are feeding upon. That is, we take plants, we consume plants directly or indirectly for our sustenance. So therefore, what I would say is that soil has been derived from Latin word solum, meaning floor. So soil is that part of the earth or the topmost part of the earth which acts as a medium for plant growth. So soil can be defined as the organic and inorganic materials that are placed on the surface of the earth which acts as a medium for plant growth. Okay? So the other thing what I would say about the soil is that it determines the way of distribution of how the natural, uh, natural resources, how the natural environment, how the settlements, how the crops, how the agricultural patterns are being distributed over the territory or landscape. All right? So another thing about soil I must say is it is an important component of sustainability of ecosystem. Okay? So in ecosystem we have majorly two components that are biotic components and the abiotic components which are regarded as the living and non-living components. So these biotic and abiotic components depends upon the soil directly or indirectly. And another thing I would say is that soil is regarded as the dynamic layer of the earth's surface or the earth's crust. Why? Because we get stiff, we get different types of soil based upon time and place. It varies from time to time and from place to place. So from this what, we, what I could uh, conclude is that soil is one of the essential part of a living and sustenance. Now coming to the composition of soil, soil is mainly comprised of four major elements which are the minerals and inorganic matter which comprises about 49 to 45 to 49 percentage. So the minerals and inorganic matters are those matters which are uh, the disintegrated rock particles or the weathered rock particles. And another is the organic matter which comprises of 2%. So this organic matter adds humus or richness to the soil with the help of decomposition of plants, remains of animals, extracts of animals. And it is also composed of water which comprises about 2 to 50%. So water in soil are in the form of salt in solution like lime, phosphorus, manganese, calcium, etc. And soil is also comprised of air that is composed of 2 to 50 percentage. So air in soil is, is in the form of saturation that is in the form of water vapor. So amongst all the atmospheric gases carbon dioxide is mainly found or it is profoundly found in the soil. So these are the four major elements that a soil is comprised of. To talk about the soil science, uh, soil has been studied under a group of science and that soil science has several branches such as pedology, edaphology, etc. So in your syllabus, since the word pedology is main maintained or mentioned, I would like to uh, give some brief introduction regarding the word pedology. 
So the word pedology has been derived from Greek word pedon which means soil. So this pe word pedology is a part of soil science which studies the soil in its natural environment. It tends to study three basic things. What are they? They are the soil genesis. Soil genesis means the soil development process or the mechanism behind how the soil are developed. And number two, soil morphology. It talks about the structure, the shape, the size, the texture, the color, the composition. So all the reliefs are under the soil morphology. And the last one is soil classification. So how the soils are being classified. So these are also studied under the relief of pedology. Before I move into the genesis or soil forming processes, I would like to highlight upon the factors for soil development. And it is very important for you all. So please try to understand what are the factors for soil development. So the factors for soil development has been generated or it has been built by the concept has been built by V. V. Dokushev in the year 1954. So V. V. Dokushev was one of the famous Russian soil scientists and he was the first one to generate or to describe the factors for soil development. So in turn he described the factors for soil development in an equation where S equals to F, F comprises of C, L, O, P and T. The syllabi S refers to soil, F refers to factors and factors comprises of C, L that is climate, O that is organisms, P that is parent material and T that is time. So all these major factors are responsible for soil development. Now I'm going to go one by one. I'm going to describe each factors one by one. Now talking about the climatic factor, climatic factor comprises of two elements that are temperature and rainfall. So the temperature and rainfall both work simultaneously. So in case of temperature, what happens is that in warm or humid climates, what happens? There is the acceleration of biological activities. When there is acceleration of biological activities, what happens? There is the, uh, there is the faster decaying of remains of plants and animals. So this is because of that what happens? There is the process of humification, where the humus or the organic matters are added to the soil. So the soil becomes rich and the other thing what I could explain in temperature is the frost action. So what happens in this frost action is that when the soil particles are exposed in the ground surface what happens in the daylight or in the warmer days the soil particles get expanded in the volume. When it gets expanded it breaks its elasticity. So when, it, when the elasticity is broken down, what happens? Small cracks are being formed. And these cracks are filled in with water or water vapor. So at night or in cooler days or cooler nights, what happens? The water gets frosted. So when the water gets frosted, when it turns into ice, the volume expands and this particles get disintegrated into smaller particles. So accelerating the formation of soil. So the temperature accelerates biological activities. It adds humus and there is the frost action which adds the minerals to the soil. And in terms of rainfall, what I could say is that rainfall is one of the major source for soil water. So it is because of rainfall the soil gets water and it is because of the rainfall two kinds of soil are basically developed. One is regarded as pedalfer and the other one is regarded as pedocal. So pedalfer are the soils which develops over the condition of 
65 centimeter or above 65 centimeter of rainfall annually and it is rich in aluminium and iron the syllabi are l refers to aluminium and fur refers to iron so this aluminium and iron what does they do they accelerates the growth of trees larger trees therefore in the forested areas this type of soil that is the pedalfa type of soil is profoundly found now coming to the pedocol what happens is that uh, in the area which experience less than 65 cm of rainfall annually there is the development or there is the extraction of materials called calcium so it is due to the calcium what happens there is the growth of luxuriant trees a uh, luxuriant plants which are profound in the semi arid areas now moving on to the second factor that is organisms organisms uh, due to organisms there is the uh, there is the acceleration of process called humification so humification as you all know there is the addition of humus with the help of decay of plants and animals so during the process of humification what happens is that the organic acid are being created or being generated such as the amino acid so what does this organic acid do is that the organic acid tends to replace the acidic ions the acidic ions like hydrogen ions into beneficial ions such as potassium calcium phosphorus so that it binds or grips the richness to the soil therefore there is the addition of uh, beneficial minerals to the soil it is due to the organisms or the activities of organisms another important thing is it is due to the borrowing of animals what does what is happening it leads to the aeration or mixing when the animals borrow under the soil what happens there is the creation of spaces or they dig the holes so when there is a creation of spaces there is the movement or circulation of water and air so when there is circulation of water and air what happens the soil gets more minerals and more humus so this is because of that the soil are more fertile and the another thing is the roots of the trees binds the soil which helps the soil to get erode away or to wash away so with this organism helps soil to develop as in the form of unification as in the form of organic acid as in the form of aeration as in the form of protecting the soil to get erode now moving on to the third and fourth process that are the parent material and time so about the parent material parent material is regarded as the bed rock or the source from where the soil particles are originated it is a rock which gets disintegrated or which are weathered down with the help of action of river water uh, ice and wind it is because of that the rocks get disintegrated and it is turned into the soil particles so it is because of the parent material it the soil tends to draw certain characteristics such as color texture shape size etc for example if the parent material is red in color the soil which are formed from that parent material tends to have that character that the soil is red in color now moving on to the time as a factor it is very essential and important element so time determines whether the soil is younger or whether the soil is older a well developed soil is regarded as the older soil the older soil or the well developed soil has layers vertical layers or horizon which needs several thousand years to develop and the younger soils are the soils which has no vertical horizon or vertical layer and the younger soil gets erode away easily so with this i have come to the conclusion to the factors for soil development so other than the four factors there are several factors like slope topography 
gradient etc you can incorporate it in your uh, notes before i move into the process or the soil genesis it is very important to know about the soil profile okay so soil profile is a vertical section of the layers of the soil which has been developed over longer period of time it tends to develop from the earth surface downwards until it reaches the bedrock or the crustal part okay so this the concept of soil profile has been developed by the famous russian soil scientist v v dokushev now to explain about the soil profile a well developed soil profile has these number of horizon that are the horizons are six in numbers okay so the top part consists of the o horizon that is regarded as the organic layer and above it are the uh, placement of the natural vegetation the trees the settlements the crops the agricultural fields etc so in the o horizon what happens the humus gets accumulated and below o horizon is the a horizon it is also regarded as the top soil it is very rich in organic matter because the organic layer consists of humus and it gets percolated down and the humus gets accumulated in the a layer and in the top soil what happens the water and air are present it is due to which there is better circulation or better aeration and below a layer is the e layer or it is also regarded as the elevation why is it called elevation because the materials from o and a layer tends to wash away or it has been leached to e horizon and it further leaches down to the b horizon and below the e horizon is b horizon which is also regarded as the zone of accumulation and deposition and this b horizon is also regarded as sub soil and this part is hard in nature and there is no presence of organic matter in this b horizon so whatever the organic matter whatever the minerals in o a and e horizon are washed away and brought down to the b horizon so thus it is regarded as a zone of elevation or accumulation or deposition and below b horizon what is there there is the parent material or the weathered rock materials where is it situated and it is also regarded as the source for soil formation and below the c horizon what is there uh, r r consists of the bedrock or the crustal part of the earth layers now coming to the processes or mechanism of soil development which is also regarded as pedogenesis or soil genesis so it is due to the mechanism and processes different types of soil are being formed so it is from the pedogenesis what we can draw we can draw the nature of different types of soil and the pedogenesis consists of seven different important mechanisms which i'm going to deal one by one the first mechanism or process talks about the addition humification and mineralization as you all know that addition means to add up so what are being added uh, the humus are being added the inorganic matters are being added so how are the inorganic matters added the inorganic matters or the soil particles are added which are brought down by the rivers air and ice with the help of erosion and the humus are added to the soil with the help of what the decomposition or decay of plants and animals now another important thing is there is the change in organic matter so in cool climatic condition what happens is that it is due to the coniferous trees the soil gets acidic in nature why because the coniferous leaves shed acid which gets uh, mixed into the soil 
so these acid turns and changes its composition in the process of humification why how because of the organic compounds the organic compounds help the acid turn into beneficial minerals that is regarded as the mineralization it turns the acid into beneficial minerals such as calcium lime potassium manganese nitrogen uh, yeah, nitrates etc and the process of addition humification and mineralization are limited only in the top layers of the soil now the second process consists of removal leaching and alluviation so what happens is that the humus the minerals added upon on the top layers gets washed away how is it washed away because of the alignment or arrangement of the soil particles if the soil are loosely spaced if there is a greater space between the soil particles what happens if there is heavy downpour what happens the minerals get washed away and it gets accumulated to the another layer and it is majorly profound in e horizon so another process is transformation and alluviation so what happens is that so in the transformation and alluviation the leaching gets stopped and what prevails there is the accumulation of materials so when there is the accumulation of materials what happens it gets mixed up with the present materials that were already in the layer so it is because of the mixing of the materials what happens the composition gets altered and it is because of that it is regarded as transformation and it is profound in b horizon so another process is podzolization and translocation so what happens is that it is prevalent in the humid climates where the temperature is low and the rainfall is heavy so when the rainfall is heavy what happens the acid are being formed in the soil so the acid with the help of chelating agents or organic compounds tends to break that acid molecules and turns it into the another ions beneficial ions such as potassium magnesium uh, etc so these chelating agents not only uh, converts the acidic soil but ions but it also tends to grab or to capture all the essential minerals that are required for soil so it tends to capture and those minerals are translocated from one horizon to the another horizon within the restricted soil profile and hence it is regarded as translocation and it is due to which pot soils soils are created so another process is lateralization from the lateralization what i would say is that so these processes can be regarded as specific till translocation it was general and now from lateralization to another process i could say i could call it as a specific process so what happens in lateralization is that when there is heavy rainfall so it is mostly profound in tropical and subtropical regions so which is characterized by heavy rainfall when there is heavy rainfall what happens there is the leaching going on or washing away of soil goes on so when the soil are being washed away the silica are being removed when the silica are being removed only the iron and oxides of iron are remain so when the oxides of iron and iron mix with the soil what happens the red or orange color are being formed so it is because of that the red soils are being formed which is termed as lateral soil and the process to form red soil or lateral soil is regarded as lateralization another specific process is calcification it is mostly profound in dry region where the temperature is very high and there is less rainfall so when there is less rainfall what happens and the and there is large amount of sunlight evaporation takes place and evaporation exceeds the precipitation so when the evaporation is in more amount what happens the ground is left behind with the accumulation of salt and calcium carbonate 
due to which in the longer process of time what happens the crust or the surface of the earth are covered with whitest whitest color uh, salt and calcium carbonate which has been termed as hard pan and calice and this refers to the process of calcification now the last process or mechanism for soil development is glaying so the glaying is performed in waterlogged or anaerobic condition so it is performed in the places where the water has been remain over a longer period of time so there is no drainage there is no well drainage so that the water has been locked for several uh, several years so it is because of that the glaying condition are being formed so what happens in waterlogged or anaerobic condition there is no circulation of air there is no presence of air and there is no presence of iron so due to which the soil turns into gray color and it is also regarded as marshes or bogs and it is very infertile in nature now coming to the properties of soil so there are two basic properties namely the physical and chemical in addition you would also add you can also add the biological properties but here i would only highlight upon the physical and chemical properties so the physical properties consist of soil structure soil texture soil color soil slope and depth soil structure means the arrangement of soil particles so how the soil particles are being arranged is studied under the soil structure so if the soil particles are arranged tightly what happens there is the process of cementation there is no movement of materials there is no movement of water there is no movement of air which leads to cementation and this type of soil is very infertile and when the soil particles are loosely spaced what happens there is the movement of minerals materials with water and air due to which the the soil becomes very fertile and next is the texture texture means the size so the texture or the size of soil uh, varies from gravel to clay it can be divided into gravel sand silt and clay gravel is larger sand is smaller than gravel then comes silt then comes clay and the other one is color color it may be reddish it may be grayish it may be brown it may be uh, black so the color also varies from different types of soil and different types of environmental condition and the other one is slope and depth so the slope and depth can be explained with the help of diagram so in this slope what you could see is that this is the high slope with steep gradient what happens there is the leaching or washing away away of materials from the top due to which what happens the profile are less developed there is no development of profile and in the low lying areas what you could see is there is the accumulation of materials brought down from the top soil to the another layer or the down part due to which there is the accumulation of soil and where the layers can be formed so this way the slope and depth also determines the physical properties of the soil now coming to the chemical properties it can be divided into acidic and alkaline nature so the acidic soil are the soil which has no calcium content or no lime content it is very infertile in nature in the acidic soil the leaching is more profound there is no accumulation rather there is the washing down of the soil and the alkaline nature of soil consist of the ph less than 7 so the ph value is less than 7 it is because of that there is the more concentration of lime so it is due to that the soil becomes very fertile and there is no leaching or washing down down away of the materials so with this i have come to the conclusion of properties of soil 
Now I will be moving on to the soil fertility and plant nutrient. It is very essential to take note of soil fertility and plant nutrient while studying the soil. Why? Because soil is regarded as the medium for plant growth. So thus a plant needs to grow under certain condition. So uh, apart from the condition, soil needs sev se several essential nutrients. So the nutrients can be categorized into 17 parts that is derived from several sources. Okay? So the three essential nutrients such as oxygen, carbon and hydrogen are derived from air and water and the remaining 14 essential nutrients are divided into macronutrient and micronutrient. So the macronutrient are widely used and micronutrients are used in under specific condition or specific condition. So the micronutrient consists of nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium and sulfur and these elements uh, gives the soil uh, gives the soil energy, protein, chlorophyll etc in order to have a, a good growth. So the deficiency of macronutrient leads to yellowing of plants, yellowing of stem, stunted growth, uh, rolling down of plants etc. And the micronutrients are consisted of iron, zinc, boron, copper etc. So dear students in your textbook a table has been maintained explaining the macronutrients and micronutrients. Please go through it. If you cannot find in your textbook, you could refer Google or you could search in any other book, textbook. Now coming to the classification of soil. So there are several systems that classify the soil based on certain condition. So now I would like to highlight upon the USDA soil classification which is referred in your syllabus. So USDA, the full form of USDA is United States Department of Agriculture. So USDA has initiated to classify the soil into three orders, namely the zonal, intrazonal and azonal soil. And hence it is regarded as the zonal classification of soil. Zonal soil are the soil which has well developed profile, it has developed over a longer period of time and intrazonal are the soil which, are, which also has well developed profile but in this case what happens one local factor is dominant such as either the parent material are dominant, either the climate are dominant, either the vegetation are dominant and in azonal soil there, is, there are no horizons. Therefore, it is regarded as the younger soil and the zonal and intrazonal soil as regarded as the older soil and azonal soil are regarded as the younger soil. Now let me move into the zonal, intrazonal and azonal soil one by one. Now in the zonal classification what we could find is that the climate and vegetation is the dominant factor. So, it, in the zonal cl uh, classification, what types of soil are profoundly found? Generally, the pedalfer and pedocol. So these two soils I have explained earlier and now I will move into the types of soil or the specific types of soil developed under the zonal or categorized under the zonal classification. Namely, well, number one, laterite soil. This I have already explained and another one is pot soils. These also I have already explained and the churnism soil. The churnism soil are developed under the semi-arid condition and it is dark in color. Why? Because Not because of the rich in humus but it is because of the content of lime. It is due to the lime content. What happened? The churnism, churnism soil is black in color and it is profoundly found in steppe or prairie region where the plants are grown or the vegetation is profound. And another one is desert soil. This also I have previously explained in the process of calcification. And now moving on to the tundra soil. So the tundra soil are developed in the arctic region where the uh, floor remains or the soil remains frozen over eight 
months of the year. So it is due to the frozen condition what happens the marshes or the bogs like condition are prevailed. Therefore, the tundra soil are very infertile in nature. The intrazonal classification consists of three types of soil namely hydromorphic, calcimorphic and halomorphic. Hydromorphic soil are developed under the waterlogged or anaerobic condition. So uh, this I have already explained in the glaying process. Now moving on to the calcimorphic soil. The calcimorphic soil are developed due to the influence of parent material. So the parent material are consisted of more calcium due to which the soil is also uh, consisting of calcium and thus it is regarded as the calcimorphic soil. And the another one is halomorphic soil which are developed under desert condition in alkaline or saline nature. This also I have already explained in calcification process previously. Now the aerosol classification consists of three namely rigosols, lithosols and alluvium. Rigosols are the soils which are formed in the desert or glaciated condition. So it is mainly formed of dry loose fragments which has been weathered or disintegrated rock blocks. And another one is lithosols. Lithosols are formed of stony materials which are profound in the hill slopes and the another and the last one is alluvium soil which are the deposits brought down by the river, uh, glacier and wind and it is very fertile in nature. So with this I have come to the conclusion on explaining the topic soil. Now you can go through your text and read about the problems and conservative measures of soil. Thank you very much class.